Alright, so I know it's been a long time, but today I got some more challenge mode for you guys. So this here is reinventing the Gogol on Bringer of Chaos. So not only do you have these four waves of really annoying mobs to get through, but then you have a really annoying super boss at the end, level 150, the highest in the game. And he has a lot of annoying things that can just ruin your day. The general strategy for the first four phases is going to be abusing Corvin's evasion art on Zeke as much as we can to both AoE and make sure we don't get hit. We have Dagas active on Mora because she won't switch off of him as long as you don't use a blade combo that combos into something else she has. And that's going to increase our AoE range a lot and also our damage, and that's going to help a lot. So the phase 1 was really good. This phase 2 was not quite as good because I killed the one I'm targeting pretty early, which leaves the other three alive. Which can just slow down this entire phase if you have to use this too many times. The reason I'm constantly swapping my blades is because I have the World Tree Drop equipped on Zeke. And the reason for that is if I keep switching, by the time I get to Carlos, I will have a higher additive total than anything else I can actually put on Zeke. And the best part is, is you don't really lose much time, if any at all, from doing this. In fact, for this phase and the next one, I would say it's optimal just to get Telos out here to topple and um, just increase the damage on this last remaining target here. So in this phase, the other thing you're looking for is for Tor to get his level 1 up so you can end this phase as fast as possible. Ideally, you want him to launch to get it, but he was kind of late launching there, so I ended up using level 1 a little before he actually launched. So overall, with the phase 2 being a little bit slower than I wanted it to, I'm a little bit behind here, and I also mess up just a little bit in this phase, and it's going to end up getting us to phase 5 a little bit slower than I would like. But phase 5 was almost perfect besides something at the very end, so I can't complain too much. This is really simple, similar in how I would want to um, topple and then get a launch here, but I press Tor's special a little bit too early while I hear the launch notification, so that ends up not quite getting him to the health range I want him to, so I have to use a few extra arts. So with that phase done, like I said, I'm a little bit slow getting there. This is going to be a 159 getting to Carlos. I've been as fast as 150 before, and on average, the good pace to get here is about 153. So this can be about 6 to 9 seconds faster on average. Which, if you see the ending time of 406, that also means that sub 4 is easily possible here with all the luck going your way. So activate overdrive instantly, then I'm going to use Corrin's arts for a little bit to um, charge up my level 2 special. And once Telos is active again, I'll be swapping to her really soon, because I'm going to need her to topple, because Morag cannot topple and neither can Tora. So I'm going to need Telos to topple here, and I'm going to swap right back to Corbin, use his level 2 special to set up the damage over time on the launch. And that's going to give us a damage over time effect of about 200,000. And every time he gets smashed, it's going to increase the damage over time by about 200,000 again. So ideally, after four smashes, he'll be at damage cap DOT. And the faster your allies are able to do that, the better for you. So then I'm going to swap back to Telos, and we're going to use all the art spam in the world on her. The way Carlos works is that when he enrages, he has a weakness to dark, and he gets a massively increased damage from dark. That's how his enrage works. He takes massively reduced damage from light and massively increased damage from dark. So you'll end up damage capping individual hits of Berserker Slash with all the extra damage Telos has in this fight. But you'll see that when we get there. Ideally, we really need to rely a lot on Tora and Morag to break top of launch and smash exactly when they're supposed to here. Their AI determines a lot in this segment of the fight. In this fight, they're actually really good, a lot better than they usually are, so that actually helped me a lot. Even once he enrages, he doesn't really get a chance to use many powerful attacks on me, and you're seeing just how powerful the Berserker Slashes are now. Every crit, every individual hit of Berserker Slash that crits is going to damage cap, and even if it doesn't damage cap, it'll do like 500,000, and even more than that if it's on a toppler launch. So basically, this is our way to just melt him as fast as possible, using Telos to do as much damage with their arts as she can, the damage over time effect ticking at damage cap, that's the orange number you see. And overall, this is going really well. They've been able to um, stop him from using Wild Wave thus far, but that's going to change in just a second. And that's what's going to end up losing me a little bit of time here. So what you can do to avoid Wild Wave is use your level 4 special, but that's going to end up losing me too much time this time. So I end up taking a gamble here and hoping my 50% chance to live saves me, and it ends up doing that. So I get one more chance to use a very quick art. I swap to Elma so I can dequip my weapon faster because she has a much faster animation to dequip than the axe. It saves me a couple more seconds and we get a 406. If the Wild Wave doesn't hit me, it's probably like a 403 or something, but that's not really a huge deal. This is still a very solid time regardless, and almost a perfect Carlos if not for that ending segment there. Like I said, if you can get to that phase faster, maybe not get wild waved at all, then you can end up getting a really nice time here of sub 4. 
But given how difficult this challenge can be at times, I'm pretty satisfied with this time for now, and if it gets beaten, then I'll be sure to come back in the future. There's a lot of work ahead of me to end up getting all the records back, but I'm going to do my best. So now I'll show off the equ equipment I used. There's proof of that I did it. So typically here on Zeke, we have the Crimson Headband for um, extra critical damage. The World Tree Drop, like I said, to increase my damage as I swap blades over the course of the battle. And the Noise Dampener to increase the damage ratio of my auto attacks, so that, or arts, so those do more damage on Telos, and I can actually hit damage cap. Tora is set up in a very supportive way. Master Scope to break, and then increase driver combo duration just to give me as much time as possible for everything else to happen. Marag is set up pretty similarly. She's set up basically to be a support bot here and driver combo as much as she can. I have special recharge on Tor so we can actually get his level 1 special up. I have typical damage increase stuff on Corwin that you might imagine. And I have Arts Heal on Telos just because I want to be able to have a little bit of healing just in case Carlos does end up hitting me one too many times. I can restore my own health every time I use an Arts. So that's very useful. Shulk and the Electric Lance with Fusion Combo have Fast Blade Switch to make sure they'll always be available to use their driver combos on Carlos. And the common lance also has fusion combo up just because we want to get as much smash damage as possible, or DOT damage. And Poppy's set up mostly to aid with this, but she also has some damage set up here to make sure she's doing what she's supposed to. I don't have the other two forms equipped because they're bad. I think that about covers it. Thanks for watching, have a great day. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it.